Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easton. Now I'm saying warm because it's quite warm up here in the loft. Um, this is Monday evening, I've just uh, opened up the windows and try to get that breeze that's outside through into the loft. Um, yeah, I had some really great feedback on the Jarrow Gorge last week. Uh, which uh just like to say thank you very much for everybody who were combatant on the last video very much appreciate all your comments especially with a couple of uh, newbies who have joined the channel right so what we're going to focus on this week is well this poor guy over here he looks fed up he just can't get his tractor across this gorge. Makes you wonder how he got it up there in the first place. Anyway, you've guessed it. I'm going to build this bridge this week. So the first thing I want to do is measure the gap. Um, basically between this face and this face. I've got to measure in between there get those dimensions right and I've got to measure a curve as well because the bridge has got to come up and then over again to make sure I've got enough height to miss any of the locos that is going to run underneath this bridge it's quite a small bridge it's quite a narrow bridge so let's start measuring I have just placed the class 26 um, into the gorge just to get an idea uh, on the height that we have here at the moment. Um, so let's have a little measure and uh, let's see where we can go from this. At the moment I have four millimeters of height from the locomotive to the underside of the roll. And, um, this is the kind of design I'm hoping to use a slight arch but I need to come at least another five millimeters higher up than what we have at the moment so I like to finish on about eight millimeters so obviously we've got to put a hump in the bridge as it were so it's time to draw it up So I have completed all my measuring and as you can see this is what we're left with. Um, so this is the baseboard, this is the height to the um, tip of the buttress as it were. So that would, would have been the road going through that line there. But uh, remember I'm saying I need a little bit more clearance. So we're going to come up 6 millimeters from this buttress edge and then as you can see the whole wall then just cambers up and then comes back down again um, obviously I'm not happy with these bits these bits need to go back a bit further but this has given me an idea of what I need so from that edge down over is 24 millimeters and I might even put a, a plinth in there which run which will end up running along the full length of the bridge from front to back and um, this height here from there to there is 18 millimeters eighteen millimeters um, so obviously I've got to mark the 18 millimeters there and I've got to make both sides identical to, to form the shape so it doesn't look uh, uneven. It looks a bit uneven at the moment. So I'm going to have to make a paper template and then use that as a guide to make the two sides. So that's what I want to do first is make the two sides and then we can then make the road as it were which will come up meet that tip and then come back down again. We want to leave a little bit there for the thickness of the car possibly two mil. So that would then run Cross there into there that's it something like that so there we go it's 72 millimeters across the 
the, the gorge, the gap as it were and uh, 36 millimeter to, to the center so hopefully with all this dimensions here we can make a template and then cut out the two side walls now that we've done our first drawing our first fix as it were this is our second fix now as you've noticed I have folded the piece of paper in half and I've drawn half of the bridge this is to ensure that when I cut this out we get a perfect form of the bridge if you like so the next thing to do is to cut this out so just going to make sure that we have our 36 millimeters make sure that we've got a nice straight cut because this is the important bit Getting this right. Now the shape, it don't have to be too critical um, because it will form itself because once you follow that line and follow that line it should open out and present itself as half a bridge now that we've opened it out now we have our template right so we're finished with the template for now and what I've been doing is I've been gluing the stone card to the uh, two mil thick card and uh, hopefully that will be rigid enough um, to give it some strength when we come to put the bridge together. So that's all I'm doing. I'm using PVA wood glue. To glue the two cards together. Pretty neat fit. Right, so what we'll do now is, now I'm happy with the two side walls and uh, I can now turn this template into another template for the walls that go on the inside. So what we've got our 18mm line there, so I'll measure that up the same and then we'll just do a curve and then just come in roughly about a millimeter or two millimeters in there and then we'll swing the car back out to form that nice shape and then the road will sit on that edge and this is the edge I was just talking about this edge here if I turn that upwards that's where the card is going to sit for the road so the road will be flush with that edge and then what we'll do we'll just put some brick um, paper on the inside um, which will hide the joint so well, that's the template so I've already marked out the card cut it some PVA wood glue on there so it's just a case of placing that brick sheet on there and hopefully we're going to give this a try and see how much room we got above the class 26 I'm just making sure that we're flush with the card that side flush the car that side, flush there, flush there I'm not too worried about the top if that's a little bit proud because I can always trim that back before we put the capping on so we're just doing a trial fit of this bridge and um, we've got roughly about 9 millimeters above the locomotive now I've been going around uh, some of the steam locomotives with the because um, some of them got quite tall chimneys on and they all come to roughly round about between 56 and 58 millimeters off the baseboard and this diesel locomotive is roughly off the baseboard it's roughly 50 55 millimeters 
so the extra nine millimeters should be plenty of clearance for a steam locomotive and here's what it looks like as you can see it's just the one single wall and once we get the other wall in you can roughly see how it's gonna camber over the top so I'm happy with the walls and the next thing we need to do is to form the road which goes across the bridge um, so we're going to have to use the template again reason being is to form the shape it's, as you can see it's, it's almost there but to get the shape I've marked a centre line for the bridge and roughly where the bridge is going to end which is roughly 72 millimetres and um, I've put a pencil in the centre making sure it's lined up with the, the centre line and then just really crushed the card home and rolled it backwards and forwards to get the round shape then we flip it over and roughly where the, the bridges um, walls come to an end so just put it back there and just do that last little bit now I might have over bent it but that's okay because once it's fitted to the walls it will sit in the recess on the wall now we've got a few creases there now that might work in my favour when I come to paint it it might act like cracks across the road but we'll see so that's what we've done there and as you can see we've got the basic idea of how I want the shape but there's one more thing left to do I've got to cut that off back there back there so this these inner lines here which is 35 mil will sit in between the buttresses right so I'm happy with the shape I've got now um, what I've done is, is I'm taking a little bit more off of this side. This is the side that has the tractor and this side is where the two uh, buildings are going to go. So I just quickly placed that across the cutting just to see what it would look like. Hence why we have this shape because that shape matches the hill uh, on the opposite side. So like I said I've reformed the curve and that sits in there lovely now so now we can glue the walls on just make sure I'm in the center of the card and the lines match up there and there and also I've got to make sure that that's 90 degrees so the road is 90 degrees to the bridge I'll just hold that there for a little while as you can see that's ended up nice and flush on that edge just wipe off any excess glue that's in there and there's the other side stuck on so the next thing I want to do is straighten up these um, arches as you can see they've kind of sprayed out a little bit so we need to straighten them up so the first thing I want to do is stick these little pieces of two mil card this is these are 20 mil so this will just sit in there and then this piece will sit across there and then once that's glued in that hopefully should straighten up the walls if you like so with those extra pieces put in the two down there and that one across I have added another piece of card on the inside just flush with the edge there and a little bit in the back of there just to make it all rigid so the next thing to do is to add 
piece of nice finished stone to go on the inside of there. Like that. That will then finish that off. So, like before, we've got to roll the card to make it fit. Where it's flush there, make sure it's sitting in the crest of the arch there. Make sure it's a nice fit. Then we can just trim it to size just by scoring a line across there. I don't th that's just sprung out then, didn't it? Hold that in there. Yeah, that would have been too wrong. Right, then we'll cut that off of there. Right, so with that underside done, with the inner arch done, it's beginning to look like a bridge. So, um, it's just one problem. What we're going to do about this white card line I've got here? Oh, we'll just flip it over, shall we? Now, remember when I did the refuges? Was it last week or the week before? And I cut out a little bit of paper. And uh, that's what I've done here. I pressed really, really hard with a pen. And hopefully, that will... Um, seep through when I uh, come to paint it similar colour to what we've got here so I'm going to have to try and blend that um, stonework in with the bridge so what I did there was I just drew around the inner circle like that obviously I marked them up individually A and B a and B, so I knew which side I had to go on. And um, there you go, so I've got the capping stone, or the, yeah, the keystone there ready. So what I do is just mark up 4mm from that edge and then draw it round with a pen. Um, and then we have these fascia stones. So that's the fascia stones done. And also to finish off the bridge itself, I have added three pieces of card. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint them in a sandstone colour. And uh, it'll look like the bridge is sitting on some sandstone supports. And that's it. That's almost done. So I'll paint these bits up. And the next time we'll see this, well, you know what I'm going to see next. It'll be on the layer. So the sandstone that I painted last night is fully dried and all I'm doing now is painting up the fascia stones. I've made up some acrylic paint, three parts white and one part black. Um, Alright, it doesn't quite match what's already there, meaning the card, but... Uh, I think once it's weathered, uh, once the whole thing is weathered, it'll be okay. Be alright on the night as they say. I'm just taking off as much paint as possible. There you go, so it looks something like that. And I've already done the one on the other side. So now for the moment of truth, I'm just going to put a bead of glue along the buttress base there and onto where that uh, hill rises for the um, road of the bridge. And we'll just put a little bit in there. Right. 
I'm just putting some glue on the bridge at the moment, just outside of camera. Don't want to get it onto the tracks and what have you. Below, so I'm just putting a smidgen of PVA glue onto where I think it's going to grip onto the side walls. Right, so here we go. So I'm just lining up the road to get in between to the road and then hopefully just push it down a little bit at a time. Oh, that's almost there. That ends down. See, it's, it's quite tight, this end's still a bit high. So I'm quite happy with the way that that has gone. Just pushing the road down on the far side, just smearing the glue around. So all I've got to do now is just wipe off the excess glue. Now if you've noticed, the bridge has come on a little bit high on both sides. Um, this side I'm not too worried about because we've still got the capping stones on to go on. But yeah, I'm quite happy with the way that that has turned out. It was a tight fit. It was always going to be a tight fit. I just want to square it up a little bit. On the whole. That is there. I've got a little gap there, but I think if I slice through that capping stone, that will squeeze up. So we've got a little bit of jiggery pokery to do to get this to fit in properly. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Right, so what we're doing now, we're doing the capping. As you can see, I've just had to sand that down a little bit to get the paint off of this um, capping stone here and I've had to do the same there just to bring the wall down to the right level um, it ended up slightly higher than, uh, than I wanted but uh, I just used a little bit of sandpaper and to bring it down now the coffee stirring sticks you can see I've already pre-scribed them so what I'm doing, I'm just going to line it up with the edge of the capping stone on the far side and just see where it bends. And then we'll just bend these coffee stone sticks one way without snapping them on each individual slab as it were. And hopefully try and get the shape. So on that one we need to start bending it back the other way. Oops. Now, if that does happen, not to worry because we can just glue that in on, on a separate as a separate piece. And then we'll just keep following the shape. first I'll probably super glue that one in first and then we'll sand this one to suit just pop it super glue on this flush with the edge make sure it's in the middle of the wall and then press it on Uh, 
this one. Yeah. Normally I would PVA wood glue these, but as we're fixing these to a radius, I'd like to get these stuck as quickly as possible. So we can keep the shape. This little slab doesn't want to go in. Right, I think that's got it. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just round these corners over and blend them in with the capping stones underneath and uh, that's ready for painting right so that's the last of the capping done it took a while to do that so that's from the end there where I've got those weights on those last bits all the way along and all the way down to these walls here now these are still damp but these were done the night before, so I've just been going along the edges with a piece of sandpaper, just taking the sharp bits off and to basically shape them to match the curve as well, where they're a little bit proud. So that's ready for painting, but I'll do them all together. So while that's drying, might as well concentrate on doing a little bit of scenery here as you can see I painted that and that's dry, that's dry pretty quick it's because of the heat up here I think it's just drying it out so what I'm trying to do here is blend the old foliage in with the new um, so I've added a little tiny path there which will go to a little hut here um, so I'm just trying to marry up the two um, obviously there'll be more trees added and hopefully it'll blend in quite nicely so I'll just uh, have a quick look around As you can see, you see the old blending in with the new and um, you would never know there was a joint there unless you've been following the series of course. So what I'll do here once this is all hardened or dry I'll just get some brown paint and create a couple of um, tractor tracks in there once that's dried. And uh, where we've got this landslides here I'll just bring them down and follow them down into the, the basin of the hill here where this wall is and uh, yeah that's creating a whole new look especially for the trains coming in and out of um, South Shields when they come across this um, embankment so in order to bring these two landslides down, what I'll do is I'll just put some 50-50 solution of uh, water and PVA wood glue and hopefully we'll start up here and then bring them together. That's if it doesn't run away with us, it seems to be, but uh, that might change once I get a few stones in there. What I'm using for that is just mixed fine ballast, so there's a bit of black, a bit of brown, a bit of grey, a bit of all sorts.
yeah, that looks quite good. I might leave that as it is, and it tapers off as it goes to the where the brick wall is. Yep, what I'll do is I'll just add a bit more solution and sprinkle a bit more on. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just adding some track marks where the tractor would have turned around to come back out of the field and also further away from the, the tracks I'm just putting in a little path where the sheep would wander or where the farmer would wander so I'm just where the stones are and just dabbing it with a little bit of mixed acrylic light brown so I'm just putting a walkway in the centre of these stones as it were, or a path and uh, I'm keeping the brush vertical so hopefully the paint will stay in the middle where I want it Just thought I'd show you what I'm, I'm doing here, and that's the overall effect I'm getting. So, for those of you who have not seen me do the capping before, um, I've got a few variants of colours here. I've got grey, white, uh, green, and white and in green on its own and in black on its own basically what I'm doing is just ablibbing it really in some cases I'll just use white and then just go over with the green um, always using the same brush because you get different variants of colors by using the same brush now you see I just put white on there before, now I'm going over the top with green and what I'll do is I'll just tone it down with a little bit of black and then what I'll do for the next section I'll just pick out white and then just do a few slabs and then as you look along this edge here they're all variant colours because sandstone is never the same colour What I'll do is I just add a little bit of black now just to darken it. And then we'll move along to the next section. Now that the painting of the capping stones is done, that finishes the general walls. And it also finishes the smallest bridge on the layout. And the farmer now has got access to his field. So, where does that leave us? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Until next time, stay safe and we'll see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye.